Dear friends, I want to talk to you about the growing power of our civil service. There is a growing debasement of our parliament happening almost by stealth. Secretary generals of government departments are refusing to come before Oireachtas committees. Ministers, some at least, are coming before both houses of the Oireachtas, ramming through legislation unwilling to accept amendments for fear of their department officials. All too often, where we elected members raise important questions, we are met with nonsense replies prepared for the Minister by their department officials with no regard to the actual questions being asked. Massive amounts of your money, your tax, are being expended without proper parliamentary oversight. Citizens do not have to look for examples very far. The National Children's Hospital, once estimated to cost 600 million, is now likely to cost 3 billion. The current search and rescue tender, which is out for the last uh, several months, uh, will cost this country somewhere between 1 and 1.5 billion for five helicopters on four bases. Yet the British can manage to negotiate a deal that gives them 18 helicopters on 12 bases, together with fixed wing aircraft and drones. There is something radically wrong in the way we do business in this country. It's your money that's been spent. I would ask you to view the video clip that is attached to this uh, short film and look at an example of how your parliament is being treated. I am absolutely appalled that intelligent ministers of high calibre are afraid to stand before the parliament and say, I simply don't know the answer to this question, but I will get an answer for you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Co. Here, look, um, Minister, you're welcome to the House for this, the third debate I have requested on procurement process for the Nexar contract. I wish to acknowledge that in the letter of the 4th of August, signed by yourself and Minister Ryan, it states that you as ministers are somewhat removed from the day-to-day -day execution of procurement process, that you have engaged with your officials to understand and reply to the issues that I have been raising. Let me ask you, Minister, are you happy to be subservient to the officials in supporting them in blocking a rockless oversight of this procurement. Let me ask you, Minister, have you regard as to how taxpayers' money is spent? Are you even the slightest bit concerned that your officials are proceeding with the procurement of Ireland's next SAR service without in-house aviation expertise the AIU recommended following the fatal crash of Rescue 116? Are you aware of the fact that the UK has just signed a SAR contract for 18 helicopters for 12 bases, fixed wing and drone support for a total of 1.6 billion for 10 years, where your department's tender uh, currently stands uh, to cost us 1 billion for five helicopters for four bases and possibly 1.5 billion by the time it's signed as a contract? Are you the slightest bit concerned that before the contract is awarded, plans are being put in place to circumvent the AAIU's recommendation concerning new flight time limitations? imposed by the Irish Aviation Authority on SAR operators. The August 4th letter states that the new regulatory framework underpinning this allows for any operator, new or existing, to apply for a variation on the maximum flight duty period of 12 hours, which would allow for a full 24-hour crew roster with the approval of the IAA is subject to the development of fatigue risk uh, management systems by the operator concerned. Has your department learned nothing from the reckless management of the SAR which cost four lives? Are you aware that the UK fleet includes six AW139 helicopters, which your advisers rejected without one scrap of empirical evidence to support their opinion? Can you tell the Irish public what experience the advisors of your department, uh, the advisors your department are using uh, in SAR? What experience have they got in SAR? <laughs> As it's my information, they are not SAR pilots and they never have been and they are not SAR crew. Let me turn to the business case and Fraser Nash. The letter of the 4th of August dismisses any potential conflict of interest between Babcock's uh, Defence and Security Group, which may be bidding uh, for the Department's uh, Coast Guard uh, 
star contract, it's my understanding that neither you nor the Cabinet were made aware of the, of the following. All companies within the Babcock International Group, including Fraser Nash, use the same secretariat. All Babcock companies, including Fraser Nash, use the same address. Were you or the Cabinet made aware of the, fa of <coughs> the directors of Fraser Nash uh, held uh, directorships in the Babcock companies. I have the names here, but I won't name them. But one of the directors uh, has 59 directorships in Babcock as well as Fraser Nash. Another one, 39, 13 uh, directorships in Babcock companies as well as Fraser Nash. Another one has eight directorships in uh, Babcock companies as well as Fraser Nash. Another one, two as well as Fraser Nash. And the final one, one. That's all five directors of Fraser Nash are in some way uh, or were at the time in some way related to Babcock. Uh, I am, am I correct in my belief that the initial business case when presented to Cabinet did not highlight the connection between Babcock and Fraser Nash? Were any precautions notified to the Cabinet in the document when it approved it? If not, what is the reason it was left out? Let me now turn to the Air Corps 415 page submission. The August 4th letter states that the Air Corps provided their own costings in relation to their hybrid option. It was noted that at the time that the Air Corps proposal was reliant on the procurement of at least two additional uh, aircraft. How did the cost an, a, an additional, possibly two additional aircraft, how do you cost that in a business case? Was it two aircraft? Was it three aircraft? Was it four aircraft? How many aircraft were the uh, Air Corps supposed to be uh, uh, charged to have? The August letter states that the AW139 uh, helicopter type originally proposed by the Air Corps did not meet the Coast Guard's requirements in terms of payroll, or sorry, payload and interoperability. I've seen Air Assurance's limited three-page three page document which criticises the 415 pages of the Air Corps. Not one scrap of empirical evidence is provided. Nothing is provided to support their view. Can you explain to me, Minister, how the aircraft which will form one third of the new UK fleet and is in use all over the world in SAR roles did not meet the Irish requirements? What do we know that the rest of the world doesn't know? Given the submission from the Mountain Rescue Ireland, where they stated they had difficulty with heavy helicopters unable to land on soft ground in the mountains, and the risk of cliff rescue situations of casualties being blown off the cliff due to the downdraft of these heavy helicopters, can you advise if this was taken into consideration? I invite you to look at the video which was made by CHC themselves where they talk about the difficulty of downdraft and the damage it can do in a rescue situation. Was the question of operating costs considered? Clearly the AW139 is a much cheaper helicopter to operate than an S92. The August 4th letter states that discussions are ongoing with the Air Corps on SAR. Can you advise when the last meeting, phone call, letters, emails were exchanged on this matter? Do you, Minister, support your Secretary General uh, of your department when he makes the most outrageous and possibly libelous allegations against the Joint Oireachtas Committee members? He stated in a letter, another source of risk is the possibility that a member of the committee may have a relationship with one of the participants in the competition and might put questions to the department. Sorry. Nearly finished, Carl. Yeah, I know that, but might I interject to say that in the absence of the Secretary General of the Department, I don't think minister you can make a political charge him. to the Minister, but not... The Minister is responsible for what's said in her department, yeah, right? But not directed at him personally. Well, the, depart the Department made these uh, allegations. Uh, I mean, I, I need to know if the min oh, yeah. Minister stands the over that. The Minister's political this, responsibility. Uh, my my question is, who is this civil servant who feels he can treat elected members of this House in this way? Ministers do not um, accept that. Minister, do you not accept that the Oireachtas and its joint committee have an oversight and governance role set out in the EU Directive 2014-24 EU of the European Parliament and the Council of the 26th of February 2014 on procurement, Article 83, particularly last two paragraphs. Finally. In the last SAR contract, the public were told that we were getting a fleet of new helicopters that would cost 40 million each. We did not get a fleet of new helicopters. We got second-hand helicopters. They were not 40. They were not valued at 40 million euros each. Minister, 
All I would say to you is I haven't heard a comment from you or your department that has convinced me that we are not going the wrong way. The public have a right to know. What is it that we can never deal with issues in public procurement in a proactive way? This is how we finish up with a children's hospital that was initially costed at 600 million, which will probably cost 3 billion. Why are we always looking back with statements from departments saying lessons have learned and we won't let it happen again? Quite frankly, this is a disaster. It should go back. The Cabinet should say go back and start all over again. Could I mean, am I got a hand at our... No, sorry. Minister Yeh. Yeah. To yeah, respond to the debate, it. please. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and I note a number of issues raised today were previously addressed uh, before this House under the Shannon Private Members Motion on the 28th of May 2021, and again under Private Members Motion and Government Counter Motion on the 2nd of February 2022. I would like to assure the House that this procurement process is being undertaken in line with the Government decision of the 27th of July 2021 and with <coughs> EU procurement law, most notably European Union Award of Public Authority Contracts Regulation 2016, Statutory Instrument Number 284-2016. There is no basis to support calls for government to suspend or further delay the process. Furthermore, if the procurement process does not continue, then the government will be in breach of public procurement law when the current contract expires. Moreover, lives could be put at risk if government allows the current contract to expire without a replacement contractor being appointed. An independent external process auditor is continually reviewing the conduct of the process on an ongoing basis. Assurance statements provided by the independent external process auditor to the Secretary General of my department are published on the department's website. To conclude, I would like to reiterate that it is imperative that a suitable contract be in place quickly to meet our obligations, to protect lives, to support communities and the maritime sector to deliver on the national search and rescue plan and to provide value for money services to our citizens. Um, leader, Cahirlach, colleagues, yesterday afternoon here we had a debate on the issue of procurement of SAR. Most people who spoke here agreed there were questions to be answered and called on the Minister to answer those questions. The Minister was aware of the questions that I had asked since August. I asked them on the floor of this House yesterday because they needed to be asked on the floor. But it, the Minister was not coming in here surprised by me or anybody else. Now, colleagues, I say this to everybody. When we allow Ministers to come before this House and provide answers which are vague or do not answer the questions that were asked, or leave themselves in a position where they are unable to say, I'm sorry, like most good teachers would say, I can't answer that question, but I will answer it tomorrow. We debase ourselves and the very parliaments we are elected to. We debase the role of this Oireachtas. We make a nonsense out of democracy. It is no wonder that people look into this house and say, to, why have we got a Senate in this country at all? I found it deeply, deeply uh, insulting yesterday that I was treated in the way I was treated in this House. And I'm not blaming the Leader, I'm not blaming you, Carherlock, or anybody else indeed. For a Minister to come in here with a pre-prepared speech written by uh, bureaucrats who were not present in this House at the time, who assumed they knew what was going to be asked, or wrote a, a speech that was so vague that it sort of covered everything and nothing at the same time. There is no getting away from the fact that they are planning to do away with the IIA regula or the IAA regulation of four 12-hour uh, shifts only and move to 24-hour shifts. There is no getting away from the conflict of interest. There is no getting away from any of the questions that were asked. And I will be writing to every member of the Oireachtas and providing transcripts of what happened here yesterday. I will also be writing to the CPP of both houses. If we're going to continue to allow uh, this House and the Lower House to be treated in the way it was treated, and if we're going to allow committees be dismissed by senior uh, civil servants 
then we may all pack up our bags, go home and forget about it because we're wasting our time. It is public money they're spending, it is the public interest we are here to protect. And I feel deeply insulted and I, I have to thank everybody who spoke here yesterday because nobody jumped up for joy and uh, tore anybody apart. There was only one member of this House who, who did not agree with the need for questions. And, and that is perfectly his right. But at the end of the day, everybody said, look, just give us the answers to the questions that have been asked for long enough. So I leave it at that. I do think that we need to look into ourselves. There needs to be a coming together of politicians in this house. It is so easy to have a crack at government uh, <clears throat> for the hell of it. But we are all in this today, and you, you may be in opposition today, tomorrow you could be in government. Just remember that. I think people should remember that. And we should all stand together when we, when we see a cause worth standing Mr. for. Minister Thank Jared you. Crockwell spoke about the debate and the statements that we had here yesterday on the SAR tenders. Um, I was one of the contributors, Chair, I think you were here. Um, the only thing I will say in relation to Jared's contribution this morning is, is that the problem with unanswered questions is that they, do, they don't go away. And if they're not answered in this forum, they tend to be brought to other forum, which is probably far more public and definitely far more scrutiny involved. And so it is a pity that we didn't get the answers yesterday, but I don't think that this is going to go away. Um